Welcome to the 2014 Flight Center Active Travel Ironman 70.3 Cairns Athlete Race Briefing. Further to this race briefing, athletes are required to read the Athlete Information Guide, which contains additional information to ensure you have a great day. This is available online to view and print at www.ironman.com forward slash Cairns 70.3. If you have any further questions following this briefing, please see the team located at the information desk adjacent to T1 at Palm Cove or at the Cairns Esplanade. Please make sure you've taken the time to check your athlete race kit for all items you'll need this weekend. This includes your swim cap, number tattoos, helmet sticker, bike seat post sticker, race bib and most importantly your athlete wristband. Your athlete wristband is your form of ID which you'll need to wear across the whole event. It will provide access into athlete-only areas. Bike, helmet and gear bag check-in is Saturday between 8am to 4.30pm. This takes place at T1 at Palm Cove. If you require bike mechanic services, they will be located at the entry to transition. Make sure you've attached your bike and helmet sticker prior to arriving to transition. You'll have your bike inspected by technical officials to ensure your bike and helmet meet safety standards. To save time, please wear your helmet to bike check-in. The bike racks are individually numbered. Please ensure that you rack your bike at your assigned position. No bike bags or covers are allowed on your bikes overnight. These will be removed as they are a danger in high winds to neighbouring bikes. If you've purchased a bike transfer service, please see the Athlete Information Guide for drop-off times. You must check in your numbered blue bike and red run bag provided. No other bags will be accepted. The blue bike bag should contain all your gear you require for T1 Swim to Bike and everything you need for the bike course. You'll need to hang this on the numbered hooks in T1 at Palm Cove. Your helmet must be checked in with your bike and you are required to leave your helmet in your blue bike bag overnight. Helmets are not to be removed. On Saturday, bike shoes may be placed in your blue bike bag or clipped to your bike. Alternatively, they can be brought into transition on Sunday morning. Your race number bib is optional on the bike course. The red run bag should contain all the gear you require for Coats Hire T2 bike to run and everything you need for the run course. You'll be able to hang this on the numbered hooks in Coats Hire T2 at Fogarty Park Cairns or hand it in during bike check-in at T1 for it to be transported to Coats Hire T2 and hung on your behalf. Your race number bib is compulsory on the run course. You will not have access to these on race morning. Teams are only required to hang their blue or red bag if they have a team member completing two legs of the course. Please make sure you're aware of the flow of each transition. T1 at Palm Cove will be where the change from swim to bike occurs. There will be three transition tours held at each location on Saturday, which will help you with any questions you have. T1 tours will be held at 10am, 11.30am and 2pm. Coats Hire T2 at Fogarty Park will be where the change from bike to run occurs. There will be three transition tours held at each location on Saturday, which will help you with any questions you have. Coats Hire T2 tours will be held at 9.30am, 11am and 2pm. We anticipate that a high volume of traffic will be travelling to Palm Cove on Sunday morning, so we advise that competitors should ensure they allow themselves adequate time to park their vehicle. If travelling from Cairns, we suggest allowing 45 minutes to one hour. Walking from the parking area to transition will take approximately 10 minutes. Transition opens at 5am. Bike mechanics will be located at the bike exit entry arch and will have resources for emergency services only. Following the start of the individual waves at 6.35am, only the team cyclists will be allowed within the T1 area. During the race, team cyclists will wait with their bike. Once the team swimmer passes them the timing chip, they can take the bike out of the rack and continue out of T1. As the team cyclist enters Coates Hire T2, they must rack their own bike individually before passing the timing chip to the team runner. 
You will be able to bring nutrition and bike shoes to transition race morning, but these must be left at your bike. You will not have access to your gear bags on race morning. You will be able to bring in your bike pump on race morning. However, you must take this with you when you exit. Pumps will be stored separately to bags in the street gear tent, so please ensure they are adequately labelled. Your black street gear bag will need to be handed in to volunteers located at bike entry exit on race morning. Transition closes at 6.45am, but please be aware wave starts will commence from 6.35am. The Ports North Swim Course is a 1.9km one lap course. The course will start at Williams Esplanade, travelling in a clockwise direction. It will take approximately 10 minutes to walk from T1 to the swim start. Please ensure you allow time for this. This event is being held near the end of what is known as the Stinger season, and it's strongly recommended by local experts that full body coverage during the swim is worn, and this may be a full wetsuit or a full tri suit. Due to the expected water temperature and the current Triathlon Australia temperature cutoff for the use of wetsuits, approval has been granted by Triathlon Australia to increase the temperature cutoff for athlete safety. If the water temperature is not greater than 26 degrees Celsius, wetsuits are optional. Please inquire at the information desk if you're unsure of the provisional water temperature. Athletes will be able to warm up on the northern side of the swim start. This is the side to the left if you're looking at the water. Approximately 10 minutes prior to start times, athletes will be called to move into the swim start area. Athletes must pass through the timing activation gate when entering the swim start area. The pro men will start at 6.35am and the pro women will start at 6.36am. Wave starts for age group athletes will begin from 6.39am. If for any reason the swim needs to be cancelled after the swim start, you will hear a continuous whistle sound. If this occurs, do not panic. Please take all directions from water safety personnel and make your way to the shore. If you decide to withdraw at any time after you've crossed the start mats, you must notify an event official so we can account for your safety. Swim safety is provided by Surf Life Saving Queensland. If at any time you need assistance, raise one arm above your head Please look after those around you and raise your arm if you see another athlete in distress. The time limit for swim leg is one hour. Any athlete who has not completed the course by this cutoff time will not be able to continue. Any team cyclist remaining in transition will be sent out onto the bike course at this time and the team will be classified as a did not finish or DNF. The bike course is 90 kilometres. Cyclists exit transition and head out through Williams Esplanade Palm Cove onto Captain Cook Highway, turning left, heading south for 250 metres to the southern turnaround before heading north. Cyclists will continue towards Tala Beach, taking in the breathtaking views of the Pacific Ocean and tropical seaside rainforest that tropical North Queensland is known for. The undulating and winding course will take competitors past Ellis Beach and Hartley's Croc Farm to the turnaround point approximately three kilometres north of Tyler Beach. From the turnaround, cyclists will follow the Captain Cook Highway south, detouring through Smithfield, down Sidlaw, Dunn, McGregor Roads before turning back via Yorkies Knob Road onto Captain Cook Highway, down into Cairns CBD and into Coates Hire T2 at Fogarty Park. Please be aware that while there are road closures in place, there may be local traffic and event vehicles on course. At approximately the 85 km mark, cyclists will make a left-hand turn into Airport Avenue. Whilst all efforts will be made to give cyclists the right of way, athletes should be prepared to stop in case it's necessary to give way to traffic. If this does occur, it will only be for a very brief period. Athletes must slow down and take extreme care through this section of the course. It is highly advisable that athletes take the time to travel the course pre-race. It is your responsibility to know the course. There will be distance markers and specific course signage. Please ensure you're following all signs that refer to the 70.3.
there will be rhyming bike mechanics on course as well as a mechanic setup in transition for pre-race services. Mechanics will carry tools and spare tubes only for the athlete to repair their own bike. They will not have spare wheels available. For more information, please speak to the bike mechanic at Transition on Saturday. Sag wagons will be roaming the course to collect any cyclists that cannot complete the event. Collected cyclists will be transported to the closest aid station or back to the Kotaya T2. Please be advised there may be delays in sag wagon transport. It is advisable for athletes to commence walking back to the nearest aid station. There are four aid stations on the bike course located approximately 20 kilometres apart. These aid stations will offer water, high five electrolytes, degas cola, B4, B5 only, high five energy bar portions, high five energy gels, bananas, Vaseline and sunscreen. This is the sequence of the bike aid stations. Volunteers will endeavour to provide approximately 50 metres between tables and service areas. Slow down through bike aid stations and maintain a straight line and consistent speed. Communicate loud and clearly. Volunteers are there to support you, not serve you. Litter zone start and litter zone finish signs are provided to define the rubbish and bidden discard zone. Outside this zone, athletes will be penalised. Roads cannot be reopened until course is clear of all rubbish. Please help by sticking to the rules and discarding only within this area. Please be focused and considerate at all times through aid stations. The safety of yourself, other athletes and volunteers should be your priority. Our volunteers will do their best to deliver what you require, but it is your responsibility to slow down and ensure you have the correct nutrition. Bike course regulations apply to this section of the course. Always ride as far to the left as possible. Always pass on the right. Always move left after a pass. Do not block other athletes' progress. Do not ride side by side. Never cross the centre line. Do not litter. Never ride with MP3 players, phones or cameras. This is a non-drafting event, meaning unless overtaking, 12 metres must be kept between yourself and the bike in front at all times. When passing, you must complete your pass within 25 seconds. Be making forward progress at all times. A started pass must be completed. After being passed, drop back 12 metres. Cannot pass until 12 metres back. If you do receive a penalty, the officials will show you a yellow or red card, tell you to stop at the next penalty tent if applicable, note your athlete number and other information. There are two penalty boxes on course located at Rex's Lookout and Cairns Esplanade prior to Coats Hire T2. The time limit for the bike leg is 5 hours 15 minutes from the start time. Any cyclists unable to reach this cutoff time will be collected by event sag wagons. Any remaining team runners in Coats Hire T2 will be sent out onto the ASICS run course at this time and the team will be classified as a did not finish. The ASICS run course is a 21.1 kilometre two lap course. Runners will exit Coates Hire T2 on Cairns Esplanade and head towards the Esplanade Plaza where it will start its first of two laps. Athletes will receive a lap band at the start of each lap, just past the finish shoot. It is the athlete's responsibility to ensure they have received the two coloured wristbands in order to proceed down the finish shoot. The Essex Run Course will have distance markers every two kilometres, traffic cones and volunteers at key decision-making points. There will be one roaming sag wagon to collect any runners that cannot complete the event. Collected runners will be transported back to the recovery area. Please be advised there may be delays in sag wagon transport. It is advisable for athletes to commence walking back to their nearest aid station. There are four aid stations on the ASICS run course located within two kilometres of each other. You'll pass each aid station multiple times. These aid stations will offer water, high five electrolyte, degas cola, diluted Red Bull, R4 only, high five energy bar portions, high five energy gels, bananas, watermelon, lollies, Vegemite, Vaseline, ice, sunscreen and glow sticks. This is the sequence of the run aid stations. 
Wherever possible, volunteers will provide a minimum of 10 metres between tables. However, due to the lay of the land, sometimes table layouts may vary across the course. The sequence of offerings, however, will remain the same. Please note that there is at least two toilets at every aid station. Unfortunately, once again due to the lay of the land, toilets cannot be consistently placed at all stations. Please ask volunteers and follow signage if in need. Please endeavour to place rubbish in the bins provided. We want to return the city to the locals as we found it. It is with their blessing we're provided access to the course. And don't forget to thank the volunteers. Please be focused and considerate at all times through aid stations. The safety of yourself, other athletes and volunteers should be your priority. Our volunteers will do their best to deliver what you require, but it is your responsibility to slow down and ensure you have the correct nutrition. Run course regulations apply to this section of the course. You must complete two laps. There'll be timing checkpoints on course validating this. Absolutely no outside assistance. No iPods, thumps, headphones, cell phones or cameras. Keep your torso covered. You must have your run number visible on the front and no littering. If an athlete is shown a yellow card, they may be directed by the technical official to perform a stop-start penalty. Three infringements equals disqualification. If you receive a red card from a technical official, you must report to the race referee once you've completed your race. The run course cutoff time is eight hours from the start time. The race is conducted under the Triathlon Australia Race Competition Rules, RCR, and a number of special Ironman rules. Please refer to the Athlete Information Guide on the event website for more information. An experienced medical team will be in place at the event with medical personnel positions at the swim start and exit in T1 and Coats Hire T2, roaming on the cycle and run courses, as well as a full medical tent setup and team at the finish line. There will also be ambulances at both transitions and roaming on course at all times. During the race, please ensure you look after yourself and your fellow athletes. If in doubt, ask for help from an event official or a volunteer on course. Please make sure you have provided the staff a check-in with your most up-to-date medical and emergency contact information. The medical team can assist with rehydration, warming or cooling and other basic care. Any athletes requiring further treatment will be transported to the Cairns Base Hospital. If you find yourself in this situation, your gear will be cared for until you return. Please inquire at the information tent when you return. To help out the medical team, please make sure you take appropriate care of yourself. If you have an acute illness, modify your expectations and allow for a bad day. Above all, don't change what you've been doing. Pre-race and public first aid is available at both information tents. Completing an Ironman 70.3 is a special experience. Crossing the finish line is the pinnacle. Hot tip, make yourself photo ready. In accordance with Ironman rules, family or friends are not permitted in the finished shoot. Please let your loved ones know of this rule as you'll be disqualified if this rule is not adhered to. This rule is enforced to reduce the risk of an athlete unintentionally harming themselves, other athletes or their loved ones. It's also important to respect other finishers and their experience. Iron Man hopes everybody makes the most of their time in the spotlight. There will be a team's holding area to allow the team swimmer and cyclist to cross the finish line with the runner. Please ensure if you're a team swimmer or cyclist, you're at this holding pen located at the entry to the finish chute in plenty of time before your runner comes in. Once you cross the finish line, there will be finish line catches to meet you and escort you through to the recovery area. You'll be presented with your finisher's medal and towel. Catches will briefly assess you and take you to medical if required. The recovery aid station will offer drink, fruit and cold food. Massage therapists will be available. Your street gear bag and finisher shirts will be available for collection. You'll need to show your race number and medal to collect your finisher shirt. There is a change tent available. Event staff and volunteers are within the post-finish area. Please advise if you require assistance. Your bike and red run bag will be available for collection between 1pm and 4.30pm on Sunday afternoon from Coates Hire T2 at Fogarty Park.
Your blue bike bag will be available during the same time from outside the fenced area of recovery. Please ensure you're still wearing your athlete wristband as staff will check this number against your bike and bags as you exit transition. All prizes will be presented at the Trinity Room at the Shangri-La at the Flight Centre Active Travel Ironman 70.3 Cairns presentations on Sunday evening commencing at 5.30pm. The roll-down ceremony for the 2014 Ironman 70.3 World Championship in Montreblanc, Quebec, Canada will take place immediately following this presentation at 6.15. There are 30 qualifying slots on offer and you must be present to claim your slot. Good luck on Sunday and we look forward to celebrating with you on the finish line.